it's Joe. Joe owns and operates a bakery in his small market town. His business is successful and it's growing, so he's employed a team of bakers to help keep up with demand. Joe works hard to ensure he supplies his customers with accurate allergen information so that more people can enjoy his fabulous creations. One of his most popular cupcakes is his coconut dream. Oh, it's good. After a busy day selling cakes, Joe receives a call from the local authority informing him that a member of the public had an allergic reaction to one of his cakes. It was his coconut dream. The customer has an allergy to almonds, but these aren't in the coconut dream. The cakes that Joe does sell that contain almonds are clearly labelled. Joe's rightly concerned, but he wants to find out why this has happened and what he can do to prevent it happening again. Joe can think of a few reasons why it might have happened. The almonds and coconut do look very similar when they're chopped up, but that might be the symptom of a higher level problem. Joe needs to use root cause analysis. Root cause analysis is a collective term for a number of structured methods that can be used to determine how and why a problem has occurred, allowing more effective long-term preventative actions to be initiated and applied. These structured techniques are practical and can be easily applied when there is a food safety issue. Joe needs to find the root cause of the mistake so that he can keep his customers safe avoid any future costs associated with food recalls, protect his reputation and minimise the financial impact the solution might require. To begin a root cause analysis, Joe needs to firstly define the incident. Next, he needs to categorise the immediate causes. Then he'll need to determine the root cause, define the preventative actions needed, and finally, review the process. But how does Joe determine the root cause of the problem? One way that Joe can do this is to use the five whys root cause analysis method. The five whys is arguably one of the simplest yet most effective root cause analysis methods. It requires Joe to ask a series of why questions. Each time a cause is identified, the question why did it happen is applied until the root cause is identified. So let's try it using the best practice example on the FSA website. Why were almonds incorrectly added to the coconut dream cake instead of coconut? The baker couldn't tell them apart. They both looked similar and neither were labelled. Why weren't the ingredients labelled? The labels were removed during the last clean but weren't replaced. Why weren't they replaced? The cleaning staff didn't consider the impact of this and it wasn't on any of their cleaning checklists. Why did the baker not spot the error? It turns out he was unfamiliar with the complete production procedure. Why was the baker unfamiliar with the procedure? The baker was trained, but there was no sign-off process to determine whether the training was satisfactory. Why might the training not have been satisfactory? The baker's understanding of the process or the impact of adding the wrong ingredient wasn't confirmed. From this line of questioning, Joe now has a better idea of the root causes. There are other methods that Joe could have used, but for now, the five wise method was sufficient. Who's ready to implement solutions to correct the problem? He's identified several different issues that need corrective actions to prevent mistakes in the future. The solutions that Joe has decided he needs to implement are to redesign his staff training procedure and include an assessment of the trainee's understanding and this will be documented in Joe's records. Joe's going to redesign the storage area in the kitchen and make sure that all ingredients are kept in separate, dedicated locations 
and replace the labels with ones that can't be removed by the cleaning staff. He's introduced a sign-off step in the baking procedure where the baker must cross-check the ingredients being used with the ingredients in the recipe. And he's adding a step to the cleaner's line checks too to ensure that ingredient stations are clearly labelled and a post-cleaning check sheet is being introduced. These solutions need to be monitored to ensure that they've had an impact and they need to be embedded into the business process. If it's not worked, then Joe can go back and investigate further. Food businesses should inform enforcement authorities of the action taken in the event of a food safety incident to prevent risks to the final customer. Enforcement authorities are being asked to forward the results of the food business's root cause